You are listening to The Real Health Podcast with Dr. Taylor Crick, episode four, Fats 2.0. Be sure to follow us online on Instagram, Twitter, like us on Facebook, and subscribe on YouTube. Welcome to The Real Health Podcast. I am your host, Dr. Taylor Crick, and today I want to talk to you about essential number three, your nutrition, maximizing your quality nutrients. But we're talking again about the most misunderstood topic in all of nutrition, and that is fat. Because what's the the concept that most people have in their heads is that dietary fat makes you fat. And remember, we talked about in the past that fat does not make you fat. If it did, America would be skinny because we have the most low-fat foods on our shelves of any country in the world, but we have the most overweight and the most obese people. And what happens when you take fat out is you actually uh, trick your body or teach your body how to become a sugar burner and not a fat burner. So that's what we're going to talk to you about today is once again the sugar burner versus the fat burner, how to become a fat burner and looking at the different types of fats. You know, what are good fats? What are bad fats? What are maybe, you know, an omega-3? What's maybe an omega-6? What about saturated fat? What does all of that mean, uh, and what do those do for our bodies? And so, first off, starting with though, we got to start with the misconception because what most people, even if they've heard this information before, you still you've just been conditioned for so long that if you are at the grocery store and you're looking at, uh, say, for example, a Greek yogurt. Okay, so that's you know one of the the health foods uh, of the last couple of years, which you know we can talk about that later. How healthy that really is. But if you're looking at that food, for example, and you see one that says low fat and one that says nothing or says full fat maybe, most Americans have been conditioned to always go for the low fat version. And what that does is they've taken out the fat that is naturally in there. So first off, it makes the food not taste as good. So most of these foods, they're going to have added sugar to sweeten it up because it's not going to taste right because they've taken the fat out. And, you know, fat was really, had really become the enemy, you know, through the the 70s and 80s, the the real low fat movement. Um, But that's what the way that all of us are conditioned. So they take this fat out. But the other thing that they that it does is by not giving your body enough fat, your body becomes a sugar burner. So many of us are taking in not enough fat. Fat is actually, in my opinion, the number one missing nutrient in the American diet, good healthy fats, and we're replacing it with sugar. So instead of being a fat burner, our bodies are sugar burners. And we talked about in past uh, podcast episodes the difference between being a fat burner and a sugar burner. And if you think of your body's metabolism, you think of metabolism as a wood-burning stove. Okay, So think of your house as being heated by a wood-burning stove. Maybe you have an old home or you know a cabin or something. That's, that's the only way that the house is going to be heated is if this stove is running. So being a sugar burner, that's like using nothing but kindling. So if you're using nothing but kindling on your wood-burning stove, you're going to have to sit next to that thing all night long and throw a handful of sticks on, a handful of sticks on, you know, leaves, uh, newspaper, whatever's easy kindling. It catches fire really quickly, creates a burst of heat, a burst of metabolism, burst of energy, but then it crashes, and then you crash, and that's your mood swings throughout the day and the crashes and the mid-afternoon crash. Whereas the opposite is being a fat burner, your body's most efficient form of fuel, that's like throwing a big log on, right? So you can throw a big log on when you go to bed and your house will stay warm throughout the night and you can be pretty certain that there's still going to be fire in the morning, throw another big log on, get that going and you're going to be burning all day and you're going to stay warm. So in your body, fat is your most efficient fuel, but that's oftentimes just not what we're burning. So one of the ways, the first step, the first thing that you have to do to turn your body into a fat burner is cut out sugar. You know, because if you th- keep throwing kindling on the fire, it's going to catch fire quickly. It's The fire is going to keep eating that up, right? Um, so you want to cut out all the sugar that that includes, you know, the obvious sources like candy, um uh, ice cream, things like that, soda, soda's the biggest one, and you can go back and listen to past episodes about sugar and where the sources are, but you have to cut that out, 
so that your body can become a fat burner. Then the second step is you have to start increasing these good fats. And so that's what I want to talk about is what is a good fat versus a bad fat. We talked about this a little bit in the last uh, fat episode, but we, we talked about, you know, nature doesn't make bad fats. Factories do, right? God doesn't make bad fats. Those are not foods by God. They're foods by man. So the foods like coconut oil, olive oil, butter, lard, natural foods are great fats. The bad ones are the ones that come from a factory. Canola. You know, I mentioned that none of us have a canola plant growing in our backyard because canola is actually an acronym. It stands for Canadian Oil Low Acid. Uh, cottonseed oil, soybean oil, and those aren't necessarily, you know, foods by man, but those oils, the way that they're prepared, the way that they're processed, they've become rancid and they're horrible for your health. They cause inflammation throughout the body, which leads to heart disease, can lead to other inflammatory diseases, which inflammation is really at the root cause of many of our disease processes that we have today. So we've got to cut out these bad fats, these foods by man. So those are the bad fats. The worst ones are the oils. You can go back and listen to the past episode about how you can change your oils and get rid of those because those are rancid. But those are trans fats that are in those oils, hydrogenated and partially hydrogenated oils. And so you can flip over your label and look at them, but it's in anything pa packaged, processed, boxed. And here's the top 10 worst trans fat foods or the top 10, you know, hidden sources or highest sources where you're going to be getting these from. And you might be surprised at some of them. Uh, soups, soups, number one, spreads. So spreads like, you know, for your bread or for uh, jams, things like that. Fast food. There's an obvious one. You know, you get a ton of bad stuff from fast food, but one of the worst is the trans fats. Uh, frozen foods. And these trans fats, too, one of the crazy things, you can look at a, the ingredients of like a McDonald's here in America, or you can even look at the ingredients of Pringles, of Oreos, and then you look at them in other countries and in Europe. They don't use these fats because they're not allowed to. So you can make that you can do these things without these fats. But this is where we're getting in our country. They use the American recipe because they're allowed to. So frozen foods, freezer foods. That's one of the worst. Baked goods, anything baked. Breakfast food, anything that's packaged that you're going to get for breakfast. Um, it, packaged food is the next one. Anything that comes in a package, you can almost guarantee is going to have some trans fats or some hydrogenated oils. Toppings and dips, another big one. Cookies and candy, chips and crackers. Another one that's not on here that I know is a hidden source is uh, salad dressing. You know, so a lot of us were switching to salad, but then we're putting these bad, you know, Hidden Valley Ranch on top or Thousand Island or something that you know might have these hydrogenated oils, these trans fats in them. So you got to get rid of those. You got to change your oils. Go back and listen to the past episode to learn what oils you can switch over from. But you got to get rid of the bad fats first. The second thing is, you know, then you got to look at your good fats and increase them. So what are the good fats? And what are the types? Well, first off, I'll go through some examples of what are good fats. So things like olives, olive oil, avocado, avocado oil, coconut, coconut oil, all really good. Uh, salmon, good source of omega-3 fats, flaxseed, chia seed, nuts, uh, and especially your grass-fed and free-range animal products. Really good source of good fats. So when I say good fats... What exactly am I talking about? What are these good fats that we're trying to increase? And there's a lot of different uh, nomenclature and names out there for different fats. You know, there's saturated fats. So that's the first one that I'll talk about. But then there are different unsaturated. There's monounsaturated. There's polyunsaturated. There's omega-3, omega-6, omega-9. There's medium chain. There's short chain. There's long chain. There's all these different names for fat, so I want to break it down a little bit and help you guys understand uh, which ones are good and maybe some misconceptions that you've had in the past of where you're getting these fats from and what you want to watch out for. So the first one that I want to talk about is you know really misunderstood, and that's your saturated fats. Okay, and so the common misconception, and even if you do a you know Google search, good fats versus bad bad fats. The bad ones that they're always going to have in most, you know, USDA food pyramid, things like that, 
Um, the bad ones that they're going to say are the trans fats, like we just talked about, and saturated fats. But they're finding out through research uh, that that is just not true at all. Okay, and so this is becoming more public knowledge. But some of the foods that are higher in saturated fats are things like our animal products. Uh, also things like tropical fruits, like coconuts, really high in saturated fats. And what they've actually shown now is the original, you know, back in the 60s, there was research done by a guy named Ansel Keys, who, who's originally, who, who came out with saturated fat being the villain, you know, being a cause of heart disease. What they found now is that, you know, uh, countries around the equator, or cultures, populations around the equator where they eat more coconut, more saturated fat from coconut, they actually have lower risks of heart disease because of the saturated fats. They're actually cardioprotective, and saturated fat is a necessary, uh, necessary for every function in your body. So it's necessary for survival, I should say. You have to have saturated fats. You can't not have them. And healthy fats in general are completely necessary for every function in your body. So healthy fats build cell membranes. This is saturated, unsaturated, all these healthy fats. They build cell membranes. They help absorb your fat-soluble vitamins. They, they make up the building blocks of hormones. They lower inflammation. Uh, they allow for proper detox. And that includes saturated fats. And you may have even seen Time Magazine had a cover, you know, in I think June of 2014, that had just eat butter on the cover. It had a stick of butter because butter is high in saturated fat. And But what they're showing, and you can look back, you know, 25 years ago where they had a same cover that said the opposite. You know, cholesterol is bad, saturated fats are bad. But now they're saying, they're showing that these are actually necessary, they're cardioprotective, and they can turn your body into a fat burner. So we've been, we've had it wrong all these years. Eat butter, eat your grass-fed animal products, eat coconut products. So coconut products are a huge one. You know, changing your oils. We talked about coconut oil being the number one oil to cook with, especially at high heat because it's a very stable oil. But there's a thousand other uses for coconut oil. You can use it as a teeth whitener, as a skin moisturizer, as a hair gel. I know people that use it as hair gel. You can do oil pulling, which you can, uh, it helps your high, oral hygiene, helps your teeth. Uh, you can use it for, uh, we use it on our babies, you know, for their diaper rash. It's, a, it's an antimicrobial, it's an antibacterial, so you can rub it on cuts. There's a lot of things that you can use coconut oil for. There's also nowadays coconut everything, you know, and if you're at Kroger, you're at Harmons, you're at Smith's, you're at your standard grocery store, there might not be as much of a selection, but even at those, even at, at the Walmarts, they're starting to be coconut products at Costco. Costco is awesome. They've got some great coconut products. Um, but this is really catching on. Starbucks actually just uh, recently just started adding coconut milk to their menu. Um, so coconut, there's a ton of coconut products. You can get coconut aminos, which is a coconut soy sauce alternative. You can get coconut ice cream. You can get coconut milk. You can get coconut water. You can get coconut almost anything. So that's one of the good fats to increase to become more of a fat burner. Start cooking with coconut oil, start eating coconut oil, start eating coconut milk, start eating coconut ice cream, if ice cream is your thing, start bumping up your coconut and your saturated fats. The other good source that I mentioned was grass-fed beef, and that's a good segue that beef is a good source of saturated fat, but with grass-fed, the reason that that is so important is because another type of fat that we want to talk about, that we hear a lot about today, are our omega-3 and omega-6 fats. The reason that it's so important to get grass-fed beef. So like we talked about uh, in past episodes, the reason that grass-fed is so important, the opposite is grain-fed. And so just like with humans, when a cow is fed grains, it gets fat quick, which is good for a farmer, bad for the cow. The cow gets sick, so it then gets pumped full of hormones, gets pumped full of antibiotics to keep it alive longer. Just the exact same thing that we do with a, with a human, with our medical system, is you know fatten it up with a bad diet, then control it with medication to keep it alive a little bit longer, and then it dies way earlier than it was supposed to. That's the exact same thing that happens with a cow. Um, and the other thing is the, the omega fats 
in our meat are horrible. So there's omega-6s and omega-3s. And omega-6s are more inflammatory, and omega-3s are more anti-inflammatory. But they're both necessary. So I want to break this down. What's skewed in our country is the ratio, the ratio of omega-6 to omega-3. And so when we hear a lot about omega-3s, taking our fish oil, uh, taking our krill oil, things for omega-3s supplement-wise, we think of those being cardioprotective or protecting against heart disease or inflammation. Well, the reason why is because our ratios are so far off. What they've found when they test us in our country is we can be anywhere between 20 to 1. That's 20 omega-6s to every 1 omega-3 to even up to 50 to 1, which is crazy because the ideal ratio should be closer to 1 to 1, maybe 2 to 1. The highest that I've ever seen anybody talk about is 4 to 1 being the ideal ratio. And we're at 20 to 1. So at least 5 times and in some cases over 10 times what the normal ratio is for the inflammatory omega-6s. So that leads to weight gain, that leads to heart disease, that leads to cancer, that leads to diabetes, that leads to hormonal problems. Inflammation is at the root cause of almost every disease. So we want to look at our omega-6s and our omega-3s. Grass-fed beef, they found, has the ideal ratio of about 1 to 1 to 2 to 1 to 4 to 1, depending on the source, but a lot better than 20 to 1. And that's what they found when they've tested conventional beef, is that's what's skewing our, our uh, ratios so bad, is all the meat that we eat with the bad fats, the high levels of omega-6s. So you have to change your meat products, you have to switch over to grass-fed beef so that you can regulate these fat levels. Okay, and so omega-3, you know, those that's your EPA, DHA, so you may have heard of that, you know, for kids, for brain development, you know, my babies take an EPA, DHA supplement. That's the animal version of omega-3s. The other omega-3 is called ALA. That's what you get from like flax seeds, from chia seeds, different seeds, the plant version of an omega-3. One thing that vegetarians have to watch out for with omega-3s is that ALA, so say you're even taking an omega-3 supplement that's a plant-based version, maybe you're vegan, you have to take more ALA because ALA has to be converted in the body to EPA and DHA. So that's, the, that's fish oil, that's krill oil, uh, that's what most omega supplements are. But if you are vegan, vegetarian, you're taking a vegan omega supplement or you're getting your good fats from nuts, from seeds, you've got to eat more of them to get, these, to get the good omega-3s. Uh, the other good sources, the best source, uh, the most, the, the highest percentage, you know, is going to be cold water salmon. That's a really, really good source that you get from your diet. So you want it to be wild caught salmon. Another thing you can look for is sockeye salmon because sockeye, it, it will never say that it's wild caught or farm raised because it's illegal to farm raise sockeye. So it's always going to be wild caught. So that's a good source of omega-3s. So when you're looking back at these different types of fats, uh, the, the other thing is medium chain. You know, that's a really good source of energy. That's your coconut products. But when you're looking back at all these different types of fats that we want to increase, the first one in the base of this fat food pyramid is changing your animal products, getting free-range eggs, free-range chicken, grass-fed beef. That's incredibly important, not just for the protein, not just for the toxins, for the hormones, for the antibiotics, but for the right fat ratios, really, really important. So then you can also, you know, switch over organic butter, you know, these other animal products, most important thing to switch over first. Then you can start increasing things with monounsaturated fats like olives, olive oil, avocados. So you can start eating those, adding those in. You should have a good fat with every single meal. So a good one is, you know, slice up avocado in with your scrambled eggs. There's a couple good fats in that meal for breakfast. Maybe for lunch, you drizzle olive oil over a, a chicken salad or, you know, something like that. Or you have a snack of veggies and hummus. And in your hummus, there's chickpeas, but there's also olive oil. So you're getting a good fat 
with your snack, or maybe you're snacking on nuts and seeds. Then you want to increase your medium chain triglycerides, which are coming from your coconut oil, your saturated fats, and medium chains. So that's your coconut products, coconut milk, coconut ice cream, coconut aminos, coconut flour, uh, coconut oil. And then at the, at the, the last thing is you want to change over your polyunsaturated. Now that's something that you want to watch your intake of even with the omega-3s. Omega-3s you're pretty safe on, but in our country over the last hundred years, our intake of polyunsaturated fats has gone from almost nothing to astronomical. So you want to watch out for those omega-6s, those inflammatory omega-6s. So no conventionally raised meat. Uh, and then stepping up on the omega-3s, raising the salmon, uh, and doing some other things like other cold water, small fish, sardines, anchovies, really, really good source there. So if you're doing those things, what you're teaching your body how to do is throw big logs on the fire and burn for a long time. Be an efficient fuel source, turning your body into a fat burner. What happens when you turn your body into a fat burner? Well, guess what? The thing that most of us are after, we begin to burn fat. Fat becomes the primary fuel source. We don't get crashes. We start losing that weight around the midsection. Our palate begins changing as we cut out the sugars. And then we also decrease our risk for cancer, for heart disease. We decrease our inflammation, which can decrease our risk for things like even thyroid conditions, you know, hormonal conditions, digestive conditions. Decreasing inflammation is going to help everything in your body. So you're not only going to get the results that you want from a weight loss standpoint, but you're going to get the results that you want from a health standpoint. The last thing that I want to talk about is with these fat levels, they can be measured. So all these rules that we've talked about, they are good. 90% of the population or more will benefit from making these changes. Uh, literally, everybody that's listening to this would benefit from making these changes. But if you want to go another layer deeper, you can actually measure these things. You can measure your omega-3s, your different, your EPA, your DHA, your ALA, your omega-6s. They measure the ratios. They measure the trans fats. They measure... The, an index uh, of your omega threes and omega sixes, and we do that through our office. So that's something that you know, if you're a patient of ours listening to this podcast, you can get through our office. But otherwise, you can look up a lab in your area. We use Genova Labs, is what it's called, and it's the blood spot fat fatty acid test, and it's part of our maximized metabolics blood and urine testing, uh, which gets some awesome data and awesome results as far as what's leading to and what's causing disease. So for example, when I did this test on myself, I was low in an index of omega-3s. My ratio wasn't off. I was just too low in omega-3s. So I, was, I had to bump up my omega-3s, take a pro-omega-3 intensive for maximized living, a supplement, um, and now it's back up in the range where I want it to be ratio-wise. So you can measure this and you can test this. But otherwise, if you're out there and you're listening, weight loss is a goal, or maybe you're just getting started, first step, cut out the sugars, but at the same time, replace them with these good fats that we've talked about. And over time, what you're going to notice, first thing is that your clothes are going to fit differently. But then if you keep this up, you're going to notice the weight starting to come off. You're going to notice energy changes. And then the biggest thing that you're not going to notice for years to come is just better life, more health, uh, longer life, less risk of disease. So start making the changes today. Uh, it's never too late, but it's start today. The time is now. So in the meantime, stay tuned. Next time, Real Health Podcast with Dr. Taylor. Uh, looking forward to the next one. We're going to talk about leaky gut. So make sure that you join us next time as we talk about leaky gut and what that can cause. Thank you for listening to the Real Health Podcast with Dr. Taylor Crick. This episode has been sponsored by realhealthresource.com, your go-to resource for everything health, nutrition, and wellness. Be sure to like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter and Instagram, and of course, please visit our website at realhealthresource.com.